Hello, I'm Rachel, and if you're listening, you probably already knew that. At the end of 2018, I made a New Year's resolution to read more. I asked people on my social media sites to put together a list of 24 books, two books a month to start with. This podcast is to help me stay on track. September 14th, I'll be reading The Gender Game by Bella Forrest, in case you want to read along. If you were the person who suggested the book, feel free to reach out to me so we can talk about it. For the podcast or just for fun. Maybe grab a drink. If you were not the suggestor, but want to get together anyway, that's great too. If you like books, you are exactly the person I am trying to get a drink with. This fortnightly suggestion came from Dylan. The Unnoticeables by Robert Brockway. Thanks, Dylan. And now, without further ado, I met my guardian angel today. She shot me in the face. This book is broken up between two main characters. Carrie, a New York punk in 1977, and Caitlin, a Los Angeles stunt woman in 2013. Although the book is sci-fi, there's no time travel, even though these two do interact. Carrie is a very stereotypical, angry, really just wants to have sex and drink up all night type of punk. A little bit like people I knew in high school, to be honest. He and the people he hangs out with are sort of besieged by these monsters roaming around New York. These monsters are broken up into three types, and he tells the audience at the same time an old version of himself tells Caitlin when he saves her from one of them trying to attack her after a party. We have the Empty Ones, the Tar Men, and the Angels. The Angels are not actually angels. They're made of light and screams and work for the mechanic or God who isn't God. They see the inefficiencies of people and split them, basically. They are split into the empty ones who are devoid of any emotion and the unnoticeables who run around doing dirty work for the angels. The unnoticeables have two interesting features. You can't really focus on them, can't remember any information about them if you turn away or blink, and they turn into Tarmen, who can eat you and burn your skin off. This is, by the way, a three-book series. Carrie and his band of misfits try to fight these things and eventually learn the truth, that humanity is flawed and it is necessary for the angels to act as agents to remove the things that makes humans flawed. So, like just their whole personality. So it makes sense that these things focus on street punks. Nobody is looking for them, many of them ran away from home, and no one will look for them if they disappear. And as for Caitlin, she didn't actually quite fit that. She's just in the wrong place at the right time. And may I just say, this is probably my favorite part of the book. She's at a party for famous people, and her friend tries to hook her up with her former teen star crush, who is, of course, one of these empty vessels. Can you imagine, like, Will Smith, let's say, because I can't think of any shows I watched when I was a teen, just crawling the fucking walls trying to suck your soul out. Wild, the visuals alone. The front of the book has a review and indictment from David Wong, a fellow article writer for Cracked.com and author of John Dies at the End, so Cracked really has a specific author base that they pull from. Overall, I'd give this book an 8 out of 10. Brockway somehow pulls off the big city punk scene as nostalgic and gets you to connect with his characters. The concept is also pretty out there. Unfortunately, Almost every chapter has Carrie needing to piss or fuck, which took me completely out of it. I don't think I'll be continuing the series, but reading something this original was definitely worth my time. Thanks for joining me this week. I hope you're not seeing monsters on the edge of your vision in 2019. Thanks, and Happy New Year. The Unnoticeables is a nightmarish and hilarious tour through modern-day Hollywood, the 1970s New York punk scene, and Robert Brockway's own diseased mind. But again, this from the guy who wrote John Dies at the End. So take that how you will, I guess.